Hello there, this is Daniele from Toolchefs and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can exchange data between different softwares. Uh, although in this video we're going to see a lot of features, the goal of it is not uh, actually to show you basic atoms in its uh, um, entirety, but just uh, to show you how this data flow works. So here we are in Maya and we're going to start working in Maya. The uh, first thing we're going to create an agent group and uh, we're going to create a points layout and a state machine. Then we're going to activate the points layout tool and we're going to start placing uh, agents in the viewport. So as you can see here you can uh, both um, place your agents by you know just placing them one by one or using a grid distribution or uh, even a Poisson distribution. In the Poisson distribution uh, you have uh, you can uh, tweak parameters but also you can do the same with the grid distribution. Uh, if you open the um, the agent layout tool uh, widget, which is on the right next to the attribute editor, you, you, you'll be able to actually tweak the attributes from there and not just uh, from the menu. Once you're done with uh, placing your agents, you can also move them around and rotate them. Uh, you can uh, rotate them on the, basically around the pivot selection, or you can just rotate the agents uh, um, on each agent pivot. Uh, you do that by just uh, pressing shift uh, while uh, clicking and dragging. Now we change the state and uh, by pressing play you see that the agents are working. Now we're going to create a new agent group and we're going to attach a grid layout module and a state machine. And we're going to change the size of the grid layout to 5x5 five five, which means that we're going to create 25 agents and uh, then we're going to move them uh, uh, in another location so uh, we're going to select the transform node activate the move tool and uh, move them away so that they're not uh, um, uh, overlapping with the other agents uh, we're going to change the display type to skin and uh, uh, change the, st the state to one if you select some agents with the uh, agent layout selection tool then you can open uh, the agent override dialog by pressing the um, override uh, agent override button and change the state uh, in this case of, of just some of, of a few some of it, some of the agents of the group um, you could also change the frame rate if you wanted uh, um, but for now we're just going to stick with the state um, okay so now here we have a simulation um, ready to be exported And we're going to open the cache exporter, select both the agent groups and select a location, a destination location for our cache and provide an end frame and click export. If you select more than one agent group, uh, they will be uh, merged in the same cache. So if you go for instance now in Udini uh, and create an agent group and uh, with a cache reader, uh, you will see all the agents from the previous two groups even if they are uh, in the same, even if uh, they are in just one cache. So as, as I just said, we just created a, an agent group, we're going to attach a cache reader, and then we're going to select the, um, the cache file that we just exported. So usually you just pick the uh, first uh, file, which is the one that doesn't have any padding. And as you can see here, we have all the agents that uh, we had previously in Maya. Um, in Udini, you can, do, you can do the same that uh, you did in Maya, so even if they are cached, you can still uh, select the agents um, and uh, yeah, move them around. So now we're going to select some of them and we're going to move them in another uh, location. Um, or you can uh, rotate them. Or delete them. So you see here you have a lot of power. Uh, you can actually tweak your uh, your simulation after it has been uh, cached, even by another software. Um, so okay, so that's uh, so our simulation uh, has been changed. Our cache has been changed, and now we're going to uh, import uh, the. Um, uh, the basically the um, scene JSON uh, that we had in the other scene. So now, so basically, we can create a new agent group and add even more agents. So we can tweak our simulation even more by just adding a new agent group and uh, creating more agents. So we're going to uh, use again uh, the points layout and uh, we're going to add a state machine. Um, and then uh, again, we're going to activate the uh, points layout tool. 
and we're going to start uh, placing agents around. Once again, even in Udini, you can still uh, select uh, the agents after they have been created and rotate them. Or move them, of course. So now we are going to export this um, simulation in a new cache. Um, we're going to select a different uh, uh, a different file name for the cache but we're going to use the same folder and uh, um, basically we're going to merge the two agent group that were just used for the um, for this simulation so we're going basically in the end merging the cache that we had previously and uh, adding also the new uh, agent that we created in the other agent group uh, okay so now we can go back to Maya and we're going to hide the two agent groups that we used before we're going to create a new one and we're going to um, add, uh, uh, sorry, we're going to select uh, uh, the cache uh, in, in a cache reader module uh, that we exported in Udini. Um, so here are all our agents. So we're going to change the display type to skin and uh, we're going to import the variation JSON for this character that we used, uh, created previously with the variation builder. Um, if you want to know about this tool, please uh, look, check out the video about the variation builder. Then we're going to attach the variation uh, module and we're going to open briefly the variation manager. The variation manager uh, reads the table that is stored inside the variation JSON and uh, um, basically gets created by the variation builder. So you don't really need to um, change this JSON file uh, uh, by hand or you, you don't have to create the table by hand, although you can if, if you want. Um, for the variation uh, JSON, you can also use our APIs that are provided, so it's very easy and straightforward to create them. Once you've imported your variations, you can uh, open the variation randomizer and assign your variations to your uh, um, agent group. Um, and then we're going to activate the variation display type so you can see the variations in the viewport. So now that we have done this, we're going to uh, create a new plane uh, and then tweak it a little and smooth it. This is because we want our agent to walk on a different terrain that uh, uh, different from the one that we used before. Um, so uh, you can do this at any time, even in Udini. Uh, so once you, are, uh, you have your terrain, you can uh, uh, use the height field manager to add it to atoms as an height field. And then we're going to assign this height field to the uh, cache reader module and then rewind so now you see all your agents are actually working on this new terrain uh, we're going to create a new uh, light and uh, we're going to render and this is uh, basically a quick a, a very quick render with arnold uh, you can also render in houdini if you want or katana uh, to, for rendering again you have to export a new cache so this cache basically is going to um, it's gonna have to, to have the agents uh, working on the on this new plane. Um, so okay, now we're going to export it, and then uh, we're going to go into Houdini. We're going to create a new scene, and we're going to set up Arnold uh, so that we can render in Houdini. Um, and we're going to create uh, the Arnold procedural with uh, via the Atoms menu. So you you have to provide the cache path and also the variation JSON that we used uh, um, previously in Maya. And this will create an Atoms proxy node for you uh, with the cache path and the variation path already set. You can also activate the variation uh, display and uh, the draw mode so that uh, you can see the variations in uh, in the viewport. Uh, now we're going to export an, uh, an FBX for the um, for the plane so that we can import that in Udini and use it for rendering. Here it is. Now we're going to create a light and the camera. Uh, 
and now we can render and as you can see here uh, Arnold is rendering in Udini so now we can go to Katana and uh, see how we can use that for rendering we're going to create an Atoms proxy node and for the Atoms proxy we're going to um, select uh, the our cache and our variation JSON um, so as you can see here again the, the the workflow is pretty similar also in katana uh, even though in katana you have uh, more uh, power because you can uh, still change materials variations from inside katana uh, while uh, at the moment in my Udini you can't do that with uh, the atoms proxy node okay so here are our variations and then we are going to activate the variation uh, draw mode um, from Katana, uh, uh, we can do a bunch of things, but before that, we're going to export the uh, Alembic for the plane that we used in Maya, so that we can import that into um, into Katana. Now we can do a quick render just to have a quick look of uh, our scene. And uh, um, after that, we're going to um, expand some of the uh, of uh, these agents so, so we can uh, perform uh, more actions on those. So we're going to expand uh, um, the agents with IDs between 10 and 20, and uh, um, we're going to uh, translate one of them. So we're going to create a transformer. 3D node and uh, uh, just uh, uh, add it to our graph and, uh, and select one of the agents um, and uh, uh, move them in the viewport. Uh, with the Atoms proxy node, although it's uh, always important to remember that uh, uh, the agents won't, won't, won't be placed again on the ground, so you have to be careful when moving uh, agents around. Um, Okay, so now that we have done that, uh, we can uh, see how we can uh, actually uh, change the variation for one of the agents. So now we're going to um, we're going to uh, change the variation for the agent that we just moved. So we're going to uh, select the uh, variation parameter. And we're going to override it to uh, summer basically so that uh, the variation for that agent will be summer not winter anymore so as you can see it's already in summer but now we're going to um, just disconnect the attribute set node quickly and as you can see the variation has changed um, And here is our render. And finally, we can uh, um, create a new material from inside Katana. Uh, it's going to be just a very basic material uh, with a red color. Uh, and we're going to assign it to some uh, um, of uh, the agents of our uh, cache. Uh, and this is just to show you how you can uh, also uh, create new materials in Katana and. Uh, uh, use them um, for rendering. And this is all for this video. If you want to know more about the tools that we used, uh, you can check out our uh, video tutorials. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.